Welcome to part two of the retro game project. In the first part, we went and we took our figs program, we made a fork of it, and we went and we added uh, some new titles, some new instructions for our Adventures of Mario game. In this project, we're going to add a coin for Mario to grab, uh, and eventually we'll actually place multiple coins all throughout the game. The goal is gonna be for Mario to grab as many coins, gain as many points as possible, before time runs out. So we're gonna add those as we go. Today, let's just go ahead and add one. So, let's go to our code. And let's start in global. We need to add some variables for our coin. So I'm gonna go where we have our boxes or our platforms. And we're gonna stick with the same naming scheme that we have for our boxes and everything. So we're gonna say var uh, c1x for coin one x position. And let's just make something up, let's say, um, something like 600 var c1 y let's try something like 410 I want this coin to be on the ground with Mario the first coin kind of easy to get um, we could always change these numbers later obviously as well var c with okay uh, let's make the coins 30 pixels wide and var c height let's make them 30 pixels tall so it'll be a 30 by 30 circle. Okay, so there's all the variables for placing our first coin. We'll add more coins as we go. And I'll add a little comment here. It says C1 for coin one, just like we did for box. Uh, we need another variable for the actual coin image. So in my files menu here, if you go to your sidebar, if you go to files, I already have a picture called Mario underscore coin. If you made a fork of my figs program, you should have that as well. If not, you can always upload an image uh, a coin image, which I'll have posted on Classroom, or you can find your own image on Google Images or whatever. You just hit select, and then you select your image and you upload it. So I have Mario underscore coin. Before I can even place that, I need a variable for it. So underneath our multimedia variables, let's say variable or var coin. All right, let's scroll all the way down to function preload all the way down here where we have all of our multimedia placed and let's place the image coin uh, equals load image capital I and my coin is called Mario underscore coin dot uh, PNG. Super important that you have all your spelling correct inside single quotations, capitalization, everything has to be exactly as it is over here in the files menu or else you're gonna get an error. Once you have this typed in, Let's press play. You should not get an error, but you also should not see a coin because we haven't actually placed it on the screen yet. Um, so let's go back to our code. Let's scroll up to our game code where we've been placing all of our things. So let's see, we have draw boxes. We have collision with boxes. I'm gonna go below collisions with boxes here. Let's make a new section called coins. And let's just go ahead and place this image. We don't need to worry about fill or stroke or anything like that because uh, it's just going to be a picture. So we're going to say image, coin, C1X, C1Y, C width, comma, C height. Make sure that you're spelling all of these parameters the same as you have in global. So I wrote capital X, capital Y, capital W, capital H uh, up in my global when I define these variables. It's crucial that you type however you wrote those uh, variables. Let's press play. And we have our coin. And there it is. Uh, when I run over the coin, nothing happens. What we want to happen, of course, is for Mario to obtain his uh, points there. So we actually have to do a couple things. We have to make a scoreboard to keep track of the points, and we have to make a collision uh, in order for Mario to actually um, hit the coin and to get the points, etc. So let's start with the scoreboard. We're gonna need a variable for this called score. So let's scroll up to global. And I'm just going to make a new section called counters. I'm calling it counters because down the road we're going to have a scoreboard, lives, and a timer. So let's go ahead and say variable score. Uh, and we want to set that equal to zero because when the game starts, Mario has zero points, right? So var score zero. Let's scroll down to our game. And actually, let's stop and splash screen real quick. I want to use the same font and colors and everything that we have in our splash screen. So I'm just going to copy all of this right here, our Adventures of Mario title, text font, fill, stroke, stroke weight, text size, all of this 
uh, lines 89 through 94, grabbing that, copying that, and let's go down to game. Underneath draw player, I'm just gonna say scoreboard, new title, and I'm gonna paste all of these things. Uh, now we have to change it, right? So the font, the fill, the stroke, all that can stay the same. The size I'm gonna make smaller. Let's make that 30, okay? Instead of saying Adventures of Mario, I want to say points with a little colon. So it's gonna say text, points, in quotations, and obviously the location has to change. So let's say 50 for X and 50 for Y. Let's press play. There we go, points, right in the corner. Now obviously right next to the word points, we want it to actually display Mario's score. So underneath this text command, let's add another text, score. Notice how score is not in quotations, okay? So points is in quotations and it's orange because it's actually gonna display the word points. If you just put the name of a variable, instead of displaying the name, it displays the value. So this is actually gonna display the value of score, which starts at zero and after we set up our collisions is gonna uh, increase every time Mario gets a, a coin. So for X position, let's move this over. So let's go to the right, so let's say 100 for X, but let's keep it 50 for Y, and hopefully this displays a nice zero right next to our points here. So let's press play. Perfect, points, zero. Now the next step is for when Mario actually hits this coin, he gets some points. We're also gonna add a nice little coin sound effect as well. So let's go to where we drew our coins, and we're gonna drop a collision right here. This is gonna look really similar to our box collision, um, where we have greater than the left-hand side, but less than the right-hand side, and same for Y. But we're not gonna copy and paste this, because this box collision is actually pretty complex, because it includes jumping for gravity and all that. We don't need it to be that complex. It's just gonna be a very simple uh, Mario hits coin collision. So, and we're gonna have to copy and paste this for each coin. So I'm just gonna put it right below our first coin image. If, P1X capital X is greater than or equal to C1X with capital X minus C with divided by two and and P1X is less than or equal to C1X plus C with divided by two. So that's saying that we are le uh, greater than the left hand side of the coin but less than the right-hand side of the coin. Let's do the same for Y. So P1Y is greater than or equal to C1Y minus C height divided by two. And, and P1Y is less than or equal to C1Y plus C height divided by two, making sure that we're very careful with capitalization and direction of our semicolon. So take a second, pause the screen, double check to make sure you've typed that correctly. And here we go. What we're gonna now do is if this is happening, Mario hits coin, so score equals score plus one, get point and let's close our statement close hit coin okay so in theory when we run over the coin we should get a point let's press play and let's go ahead and run on our coin well we're getting points so as we sit on the coin we continue to get points so our collisions working the next thing we actually have to do is we have to make the coin disappear so I get the point and now the coin goes bye-bye. Okay, so all we're gonna do after we get the point is let's just change the X position of the coin. So C1X equals any number that's off the screen. So I'm gonna go negative 1,000. So this is move coin off screen. Okay, so let's press play. There we go, coin disappeared. It's all the way over here. Negative 1,000 is way off the screen, uh, so but we got our point, which is awesome. Now the next step would be copy and paste and add more coins, and we'll get into that actually in the next video, but what I wanna end with is adding a little coin sound effect, a little ka-ching, 
sound effect. So the first thing we have to do is we actually have to grab our coin sound effect and you can, if you want, you can find your own on the internet. Um, there's lots of great sites that you can grab MP3 files from. Uh, you can even record your own. But on Google Classroom underneath classwork, there's a material called coin sound effect and you can see coin underscore sound M4A. Let's click on that and you can hear there's a little retro coin. Top right corner, there should be three dots on your screen and you can actually open that in a new window and then hit the download button right here. Top right corner, download. Okay, that just downloaded the sound to your files uh, folder on your Chromebook. Then if we go back to our open processing window on the files tab, hit select, go to your downloads and you should see coin sound right here. Okay, so let's open that up. It loads coin underscore M4A. So we need two things. We have to make a variable for the coin and we have to actually place that. Uh, so let's scroll up to global multimedia. Let's make variable called coin. I'm gonna call it coin sound, capital S, just like I did jump sound up here in our global section of multimedia. Let's scroll all the way down to preload. Let's add coin sound equals load sound, capital S. And then in single quotations, we're gonna put coin underscore sound dot M4A, spelled exactly like it is on the right hand side, right here in our files menu. And now the last thing is actually to trigger or play the sound when we want it to play. And we want it to play when we're obtaining a point. So let's go find uh, that if statement we just created right here where we gain a point, the coin goes off the screen. We're also going to add coin sound dot play. Parenthesis, parenthesis, semicolon. Okay, just like this. Let's press play and let's go run over this coin. There we go. Coin goes away, we gain a point and we play a sound. Let's press save. Uh, if you posted your retro game to the final project uh, in the last video to interact with programming, that's gonna automatically update the post so you don't have to repost. That's it for this week. Um, in the next video or later in the week in the next video, we're actually going to take our single coin and our single platform and we're just gonna add multiple platforms, multiple coins. So you can either wait till next class to watch that, you can watch that now, uh, whatever works for you. Keep up the awesome work and we're just gonna keep making a pretty cool game here. So nice job.